gets called anxious avoidant attachment. Anxious avoidants often spend much of their time alone and miserable or in an abusive and dysfunctional. They don't tend to seek help when they are in need due to a distrust of others. They don't think that they deserve help. Or low and confident. Jesus, this is a- Mark Manson's a little harsh with his wording. Uh, they just trust them. I it makes sense that I'm anxious avoiding. Oh, fearful or disorganized. That's exactly me. Bring together the worst of both worlds. Woohoo! Okay. Not a happy ending. Fuckers, how you doing? You okay? Are you ready for the nuclear war? Just kidding. It's not going to happen. Welcome to another episode of Guys We Fucked. Uh, it's the... <laughs> well, I, I didn't pay attention to the cameras and I didn't know why, <laughs> why this one's tilted over us. Uh, mm-hmm. This has been... This is Guys We Fucked. I was like, this has been... This is starting, Guys We Fucked, the anti-slut shaming podcast. I'm Corinne Fisher. I'm Christina Hutchinson. Welcome to the show. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to up the quality of the video because you guys got to do that on your ends because we're doing our part of the bargain and uploading the video yeah but you have to do the resolution if you click the little gear icon and you put like 10 20 or 1080 hd you'll be able to see us better it'll look better and then you don't have to make all the comments about the background what we're wearing yeah. all these things you know what start your own fucking podcast if you don't like the yeah. way this looks everyone else has and yeah if you if you if you do crank it up to hd in this particular episode you will notice that my skin might be exploding and that's because i strayed from my diet and i ate two whole bags of combos and a lot of fried chicken so i'm working on it you know sometimes we get off the bandwagon you gotta get back on or the wagon not the bandwagon Two yeah. different, two different. The, wagon, wagon. Yeah. the, ba- yeah. the uh, bandwagon no. is like for losers. The, ba- yeah, well, yes. the, the bandwagon is for uh, uh, lemmings, and the, the yeah. wagon is for addicts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah <laughs> so yeah. I'm so kind of on both. <laughs> you want to be on the, the wagon, yeah. not the bandwagon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely on That's that right. wagon. <laughs> we will get back on that wagon. The wagon's fun. The bad, the bandwagon's just like you know, outside Times Square, looking up at the MTV studios to yes. see what Carson Daly is doing. Yes. Old school reference. <laughs> oh my god, I watched the. I listened or I listened to the C Word episode, a Luminary podcast. That fucking podcast podcast is so good i'm now addicted the mariah carey episode you. yeah where she just shows up at mtv <clears throat> trl unannounced and and uh carson daly's like what the hell and she has the ice cream cart mariah carey seems oh, I like I, I a real fun lady yeah. she she does and her a good first, time sally her first relationship with that music producer was so emotionally abused he was so emotionally abusive to her Holy well i mean shit. i feel like that's like a kind of a standard like that's like how you get welcomed into the music business because not that they were all not that they were all abusive but alanis morris that has a very similar uh, story with, uh, I guess it's Glenn Ballard. Sorry, mm. tell me if that was the wrong name. I'm pretty sure it's Glenn ba- Ballard. And then, uh, uh, you know, Celine Dion with Renee. You know, yeah. she was like fucking 12 when she met that guy. I mean, oh. they didn't fuck when she was 12. He oh, waited, good. but, you know. Oh, he waited in the corner for her. Yeah, it's weird happy to meet someone that when they're 12 Celine. and like, I'm going to put that on the back burner. Ugh. You know? You know, so, okay, here's a, Elvis, obviously. This isn't an unpopular opinion. It's probably just an unpopular thing to say, but like, it's true and we all fucking know. You know, when you see a kid and you're like, you're going to be so hot one day yeah like i do understand like oh, okay don't wait you know don't fuck a kid that's well i mean illegal. isolate this now because this is how i'm gonna get canceled but my friend robin and i had a thing called future hotties of america <laughs> Um, where and but this is when we were all in school so we were in oh, school you were young. we were in school we, this is fucked up um, let's go baby we were in high school and there was one day when the middle schoolers would come to practice in like the big auditorium for their like a thing and we wouldn't say anything we wouldn't re- uh, we wouldn't interact with any of the kids we weren't being gross about it we would just privately go that kid's probably gonna be hot one yeah day. yeah <laughs> not yet yeah. you just see like it has the qualities like the yeah. eyes are spaced yeah. correctly yeah the hair is nice the teeth are Good. Yeah, if they already look like they got lip injections and they're a kid, you're like, wow, you yeah. got a bright future ahead of you. Not a lot of no's coming your way. Yeah, it's not like we're, we're getting horny for children. No, we're no, not, no. We were not aroused. We were not talking to them. We were not saying this in front of anyone else. But I think it's also like you need to have conversations like this because yeah. uh, otherwise you say something like that everyone has privately thought, but then other people just think like, oh, I can never say these things. Yeah. Also, I mean... You know, part of uh, part of obsessive compulsive disorder is also just having intrusive thoughts. And so like that kind of thought where you're like doing something and then you think about like, oh, but what if I did fuck my dad? Um, I was just going to say compulsive yeah. disorder. I had a, uh, that's like that's called an intrusive thought. Yeah. And I mean, you and know, you can't get rid of it. Right. Because I've had that you, exact. Thought. And then you just quietly think like, oh, I'm a bad person. And I'm not saying that because you have that thought, you necessarily have obsessive compulsive disorder. Right. But intrusive thoughts are a big part of the disorder. And. 
then um, you know what makes it, it worse is that you just sit alone and you think that you're a bad person uh. who's having bad thoughts. Um, uh, and and that and then that obviously uh, adds to the anxiety. So mm. it's a very important to discuss things like this. And listen, like we all, you all, like you all think the most fucked up things. It's it, it's just having the human capacity um, and wherewithal to know the things you can act on and the things you can't, and also the things you can say in a public forum and the things you can't. Like I wouldn't say that in a fucking business meeting. What I just said, but this is a podcast where we discuss weird shit. Yeah, and so I'm fine with sharing it. Yeah, and speaking of, so I'm gonna get into. We got a couple responses. Responses, email responses for weird stuff I masturbate to, which I'm going to read those in a Oof. second. Before I do, uh, please know that on Wednesday, October 26th at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Corinne Fisher, myself, Christina Hutchinson, and Michael Coscarelli are going to be doing a live episode of Guys Who Fucked just for our YouTube followers. So make sure you're subscribing to us because you will have a chance to call in, to text in. You can get live advice from us. You can tell us a crazy story. Um, you know, don't send us a dick pic. I don't want to fucking see that. Uh, but yeah, because I usually read the emails or the the. Yeah, right. I have Michael. So you're do really it. just sending a dick pic to Michael. Oh, don't send don't and don't want. waste our time sending titties to Michael. Just like just get to the good stuff. You know he what I'm doesn't saying? want a dick pic. He just takes a picture of his own dick and he looks at it. <laughs> wow, really? And he said that's good enough for me. Oof. Okay. Um, and then also New York City, uh, New York Comedy Festival. Really want to push this show. Yeah. On Thursday, November 10th, uh, we are doing a live taping of Guys We Fucked at the Midnight Theater in New York City. The ticket link is up at sorryaboutlastnightcomedy.com. You're going to want to go to that. You're going to want to go to that. We never do live episodes of the podcast. Mm -mm. It's yeah. a very rare event. It's not a lot of it's not a lot of tickets available for this. It's like 120. That's it. It's going to sell out. Get your tickets now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, Corinne, you want to read some of these? All right. Weird stuff I masturbate to. Um, and this was just from the emails. Yeah. I once masturbated to one of my brother's ex-girlfriends. It was hot until it wasn't. I felt weird afterwards for sure. Don't worry. It wasn't my brother that I imagined was doing things to her. It was me. I'm assumed. And at least it was years after they broke up. I'm guessing that's from a woman too. Yeah. Which makes it somehow not. Yeah. The weirdest porn I've masturbated to is adult breastfeeding. LOL. I don't know. I was curious. <laughs> Yeah, I don't blame you. And a much older dude fucking a younger girl. I yeah. was sexually assaulted Hack. in my teen oh. years by an uncle. So I think that's why I weirdly enjoy the porn videos. Yeah, a lot of times uh, certain kinks and stuff are a way to like work out of the trauma. Yeah. You know, the human mind is is a complex thing. Uh, you want me to do this? something fucked up that I masturbated to. I'm going next week to be a cook for a hunting camp, and I've been masturbating to the idea of all the hunters gang banging, <laughs> gang banging, banging me like very rapey. That uh, one, that one's wild. Gang, gang. No, that sounds funny shit. Uh, I almost exclusively masturbate to stepdad, stepdaughter porn. I, I, yeah, I get that. Uh, I have no idea why, but I'm sure it has something to do with my relationship with my brother's dad, aka my stepdad. Not necessarily, but if you have a hunch, it might. I've always been very uncomfortable with him. He has very, he's never been my primary parent, but had always done vaginal checks on me until I was about 12. Oh, I don't know what that is. That's not a thing. Guys, if someone's that's, doing a that's assault. If someone's doing a vaginal check on you, that's not a, that's just, that's, a, that's not a thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's not yeah. And then tell a trusted adult uh, if you're underage. Never let me close my door at his house even to change and was a little too eager to exclaim sex is good for you. He's been emotionally, mentally abusive to both myself and my brother. And I haven't spoken to him in over 10 years now. Yeah. I mean, that makes honestly, that makes all the sense in the world that you would masturbate to, to being kind of watching a situation where you're in kind of in control of it or like hopefully the porn actors are, you know, all consenting and in control. I mean, um, I do vaginal checks on myself, but that's different. Like in the shower and like stuff? What's a sure oh, like you taste like, it? Uh, more like make sure it smells okay. Make, take a look inside. Shit's oh. going on there. You need a, you know, do you need a mirror? Pull open the curtains. Now I can just, I, I can look like this. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, I'm not looking in, in up in the hole, oh. but all the things I need to see where shit, shit goes awry, I can see myself. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I was having sex, not to brag, but I was having sex. And then... Um, <laughs> Uh, um, and then I was up on top of him and then I um, I was putting his penis in my mouth and I was like this tastes great good for me 
That's it. What do you mean you were on top of him and putting your penis? You, you, I, I was having you sex and if, then I... You did it as if you were like, uh, that, as if he had a, like an extension cord on his dick and you were just riding <laughs> him and just like, eh, And I, I go, freaking wish. Wow, is there something about his dick that I don't know? No, but like when you when you bang without a condom and oh, then right, after right, right, the right, sex, right, 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 you right. suck a dick. Yes, dick, yes, yes, yes. Um, and then you, ta- you get a taste of your own, you know, supply. And I was like, right. passes the test. Yeah, uh, I, I find it great. odd that women enjoy that. Why? A lot of women don't. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, I just there's do. like there's like I mean like there's a full episode of Sex in the City where uh, a guy goes down on um, Miranda and then he immediately her. goes up to kiss her and she's disgusted by it. That's uh, a full episode. So I yeah. mean, it all depends with your own comfort comfort level. I feel like this is just we're just a little more narcissistic <laughs> for sure because I love <laughs> oh, the smell of my own not narcissistic <laughs> egotistical. I love the smell word. of my own underwear. But yeah, I think really? it smells. I just get so aroused. I'm like, this smells amazing. Huh. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. It is what it is. Uh, okay. If you guys want to, you know, email us a weird masturbation story, feel free. Sorry about last night show at gmail.com. Or you can email us, you know, something longer that's uh, details a situation or a story that you have that you're going through that you want help with or you just want to share with folks. Today's subject line is my boyfriend set all my stuff on fire. This sucks. Yeah. Hi, Christina and Corinne. Longtime loyal fucker here. I've listened since the very beginning, and I feel like you guys have helped me r- raise my dumb bitch self through my 20s. You, your shit truly rocks, and I'm so thankful that you guys do what you do. Anyways, I'm a 26-year-old female who lives in Oklahoma City. I have been with my boyfriend for five plus years. Yes, this means I've been with him through pretty much my whole 20s. We live together and have for a few years now. My boyfriend, let's call him Scott has always been extremely insecure and jealous. Oh, Ooh, sexy, Scott. How did you get through five years of that? I don't know. Maybe secretly like it? I don't know. He constantly thinks I'm cheating on him. He might be cheating on you then. Or doing something behind his back. That usually means he's doing something behind your back, but we'll see. Not all the time. It's gotten to the point where I don't do much without him and even text him when I make it to a certain place to let him know that I've arrived. Hey, girl, that's controlling as hell, okay? You don't have to do that because of your boyfriend, girlfriend. That's like dumb behavior. I know I'm in a very toxic relationship. This isn't no this is not news to me. This isn't not news to me. It wasn't always like this, but has progressively gotten worse. <sighs> Bless, Bless you. you. Sorry, especially I was to this email. Especially, <laughs> especially these past two years. Anyways, to the point of my main story that has finally become the breaking point, I needed to end the relationship. This past weekend I went out for a friend's birthday. Scott had been out all day with his family at a softball tournament for his nieces. I hate life. I told him I was going out and asked if he wanted to meet me there or whatever. He said yes, but ended up meeting me at our house because I wasn't done getting ready yet. He comes home and had obviously been drinking. I asked how much he had to drink because he was acting pretty drunk and he clearly lied. He said four beers. I knew this was a lie. I brushed it off anyways and we went out with my friends. We arrived at the bar, got some drinks and settled in talking to everyone and hanging out. About an hour in, Scott thinks I'm flirting with a friend who was there. We were literally all sitting by each other and talking at a table scott was even in the conversations he decides to leave because he thinks i'm flirting with this guy i stay out because i wasn't doing anything wrong and i barely go out with my friends so i was trying to enjoy the night despite scott Mm. he then proceeds to call my phone continuously probably over a hundred times girl that is mental Mm. continuously texting me bitch period slut period whore period cunt what is he caveman oh my god saying fuck whoever you want tonight Ooh, is that a promise (laughs) things pretty much along those lines thinking that i'm trying to fuck this guy or someone else i am ignoring his calls and pretty much not texting him back i tried answering a couple times but he just proceeded to cuss me out so i told him that i didn't want to talk to him for the night and that i hadn't done anything wrong he then proceeds to text me saying that he's going to throw my shit out text me a picture of my clothes in the garage floor I hang out for a little while longer deciding if I should even go home or get a hotel room for the night I decide to get an uber home as I pull up to his house his mom is there oh boy this is Corinne's worst my nightmare he, they are outside yeah, just light my house on fire don't get your <laughs> fucking family involved <laughs> <laughs> they are outside so I just walk in the house smells like gasoline oh my this person is mentally ill yeah he yeah Scott follows me in and I ask why does the house smell like gasoline? And other questions you don't want to have to ask your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> he then tells me he lit my stuff on fire. Oh, oh no. but of course, Scott. But of course. <laughs> it turns out my boyfriend had taken everything from my closet, 
and everything from my nightstand. Oh, girl, your vibrators too, including my very important papers, tax documents and pay stubs, bank info and obituaries from two specific people, books and drenched it all in gasoline and set it on fire that's in, that's so insane also regarding the obituaries you can request an archive copy of a newspaper if that helps because that would have really I love that would really upset tip. me yeah yeah uh, all my stuff i go to the garage to check out the situation and i'm so upset i start crying and i go back inside where scott is he tries to talk to me he will not leave me alone where the, what the fuck is his mom doing during all this going that's my baby uh, I do not want to talk to him. So I keep telling me, so I keep telling him to leave me alone. He doesn't listen. So I threatened to call one of my sisters if he didn't back the fuck off. That'll show him. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think that will show him. Call the police. Yeah, I knew this would get him to quit and leave me be for the night. Well, his mom must have been just outside the door to where she could hear us arguing because once I made that comment about my sisters, she immediately calls me and says, why are you going to call your sisters? And what? What did you do to my son? The fucking audacity. This, this is just so crazy. This it doesn't even awful. make sense. I know. I'm like, what? what? Anyways. I just is, relate to this so much. You do? <laughs> I think. Michael. Listen, I would never do anything like this, but I think. But that you want I, No, no, no. But I think if I was unhinged and wanted to do it, my mom would bring me the matches. Hey, look. I 100% what? say. Oh, yeah. I think 100% what? think so. Mm. Yo, I, that, is that some Italian mom shit? I yes. wish my mom was that kind case. of unhinged because I was like, bitch, I need an assist. Yeah, yeah, right. I would what? never, I would never what? ever, I mean, this is She outrageous. would tag up with someone else to light my house on fire more likely. <laughs> She'd be like, let's, she, girl needs to learn a lesson. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, anyway, this is pretty much the end of the night. I went to our bedroom, got ready for bed and laid down while he talked to his mom outside. I'm assuming that she was calming him down. I'm so hurt, sad, lonely, and confused. I don't know how one drunken night turned out to ruin our almost six year relationship girl you didn't do anything this is him I mean you the only yeah. thing you did was stay in this relationship which look we gotta look for personal responsibility where we can because then that gives us some control what can we do how can we pivot but Jesus Christ this is all Scottykins. Yeah, t tonight, it's th this night that you're explaining is what what we what we call here in the industry uh, the culmination. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was this was. It's not like he was like amazing and then all of a sudden did a yeah. Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah, this was building up. Yeah, he he was giving you warning sign. Yeah, he was exactly <laughs> yeah. the exactly. season finale to the series that is your relationship. Yeah, this is a series finale to Scott. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. A, 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 a show that people you sit know, at home and watch to forget about how you know their up relationships their are. <laughs> Because this is so much worse. <laughs> How do I still... These are questions that you're going to have to answer, Chris. <laughs> How do I still love and care for someone so much when they have treated me this way? You stop. Um, I mean, well, I mean, I know, think she's saying like, why does she still love him after all? She's been through this. That's it's, a trick. It's the amount of years you put in. It's it's almost biological. You're gonna love this motherfucker regardless. Yeah, and I would say, <clears throat> based on things I'm going through, maybe personally right now, I think even when someone does fucked up things to you, um, the love can like change a little bit. So it's like maybe it's not like this passionate love that you had for them initially, but you still love them in that you have empathy for them and that you're worried about them in that. Um, you know, in that it's painful to see them turn into this different person. You're also Probably probably like still in, you know, I think a lot of times we trick ourselves into still being in love with the initial person of the uh, version of the person that we met. Yeah. So a lot of far. times, like when I'm thinking about a person, I'm not thinking about a, a person the way they are now. I'm thinking about that person when I fell in love with them and they are kind of like frozen cryogenically in time as that person in my mind mm -hmm. and like that's something that they'll talk about a lot in breaks breakups and and so sometimes you need to kind of like really force yourself to see the person for who they are now as painful as that might be for yourself it's so sad to think that the relationship with someone who i considered to be my best friend in the world and someone i shared so many great memories with has ended like this yeah, they all kind of do sister i get yeah i mean it's because we don't have the communication tools to end something when we actually need to end it and we just have conversations with ourselves and build up this narrative that's not even fucking true and then we need explode like Scott. This is also I mean, a better story. Yeah. yeah. At least you know you're done. Hey, yeah. if you were a stand-up <laughs> comedian, so I would back. tell you, 
that's a bit yeah <laughs> i guess i am writing to get this off my chest i can't seem to tell my mom or my sisters yet yeah that's when you gotta ruminate on for a while i'm so embarrassed about it yep 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 however i've told my friends that were there the night it happened it was easier telling them and i know i needed to tell someone so i didn't just try to act like this didn't happen or try to justify scott's drunken actions and continue my, the relationship with him good gal yeah i mean i think i think honestly i think something like so big like this had to happen because you didn't take the several hundred other other hints the universe gave you. Yeah. And so the universe was like, warning, warning. Bitch, your house is on fire. You need to evacuate. <laughs> I feel so manipulated, betrayed and gaslighted. Yeah. And literally and figuratively. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is someone I thought I was going to marry, no. spend my life with. And like I said, had so many great fucking times with. Hey, that's the nature of an early 20s relationship. It's a weird precipice being in your early, like being 20, 21, 22 and dating someone you really love. It's iffy because you're like, ah, is this what I want to settle down? Like, I don't know. And so, you know, and pe also people's brains aren't fully formed until they're 25. People grow apart. It's not, it's, it's, it's normal. But also, like, love will change. Normal, but. Like, the love that I felt for, like, my boyfriends when I was this age and the love that I feel for boyfriends now is drastically different. Mm -hmm. so, I know this whole thing and my relationship has been such a dumb bitch move, but I suppose I'm still learning. That's correct. And I think I just learned my biggest lesson so far. When you see the red flags from the beginning, then fucking listen. Again, thank you, ladies, for all you do. Attached is him burning all my stuff from that night to give you some perspective. I'm what? so bummed because there was no attachment to this email. Isabel wrote the note and then I looked and I'm like, fuck, I really wanted to see it. I had to, what, what picture? You I guess it was a video him. or something. <laughs> wow. I would love I mean, to maybe see this great. video. <laughs> yeah, like, what is your first reaction when you come home, smell gasoline, and realize your boyfriend's poured it all over your stuff and lights on a fire? Tape that shit, I guess. I guess. Evidence, yeah, baby. Evidence, right. Evidence, <laughs> right. baby. Yeah, I would also kind of want to see, like, what, like, how is he doing it? Is he doing it slowly? Is he doing right. it quickly? Right, 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 right. I'm very curious. So please email us again with that video or photos, because I would like to see it personally. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, thanks, thanks, thanks for Google writing drive. Sin. You know, sometimes shit. One thing that um, Anne Marie Duchesne, who I'm working with as like a personal coach, basically, uh, she was a guest on this podcast. She said something to me once, and I was like, oh, like it. It's so basic and so obvious, you know. But I really was perplexed and kind of taken back by it. She goes, you know, you don't have to hit rock bottom to change your ways. And I was mm. like, really? Mm. That's wild <laughs> you telling me i don't have to like let the motherfucker burn like to myself is how i usually like i burn my own house down metaphorically um by not addressing things when they as they come up and i was like wow what a concept you know and i feel like a lot of times with relationships we 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 don't have the evidence or the concrete thing reason for breaking up we don't want to say it's because we fade the love is faded the attraction is faded we're just not that into that person anymore we've grown apart like we're so scared to use that as an answer i don't know maybe it's because you're afraid that it might be wrong i have no idea but the thing is and <laughs> let's bring it back to fucking genius angel singer mariah carey if something is really meant to be in the end you let it go and if it comes back like a freaking butterfly or whatever she said in her song then uh it was meant to be you know so you can't go wrong letting someone go because if it really was meant to work out it will you know what I'm saying? So you might as well just go with your gut here. Um, thank you. Um, make sure, yeah, you see us November 10th at New York Comedy Festival, 10.30 p.m. If you have a festival pass to that or if you want to, you know, double up that night, 7 p.m., Vonda Carlo and I are co-headlining. We're each doing half-hour sets at New York Comedy Club, 7 p.m., Thursday, November 10th. Very excited for that. Which location? Uh, the 24th Street location. Thank you. And if you go to ChristinaHutchinson.com, you can get the ticket link. And also, my Patreon is... Patreon in and I'm really excited about it. I'm doing four group Zoom therapy and quotes chat because I'm not a licensed therapist. It's more like group lamenting, but I'm doing four of them this month. Sign up for the $5 a month one. Don't sign up for the $33 one unless you're rich Um, because uh, I just feel guilty getting that much money from someone. But uh, yeah, and then I'm uploading the audio recordings from the Laurel and Jackson retreat uh, after I do the Voices in Our Head episode kind of explaining how the weekend went in, in more detail. So patreon.com slash Christina Hutchinson. I'm really excited. Come talk with us. And then additionally, the uh, another New York Comedy Festival show uh, Tuesday, November 8th, Without a Country Live. It's going to be our midterms uh, elections live show. Shane Smith and I are going to be broadcasting live from uh, the showroom in the back of 66 Greenpoint Avenue um, in Brooklyn. So that's easy for you guys to get to. I know there's a lot of fuckers in Brooklyn. We'll have yeah. some drinks. We'll talk about, uh, you know, 
you know, who's possibly going to take over the country, how everything is doing, if we are on the verge of a war. Like, it'll be fun. I love these live um, kind of uh, election shows. They're really fun. Um, so, yeah, get that uh, through the New York Comedy Festival. I'll put a link in my bio um, in my link tree as well. And then uh, we're going to keep asking you this every day. Um, please go to Apple Podcast app and rate and review Guys We Fucked to keep us in the top 200 charts. We're currently not in the charts. Who the fuck knows what the algorithm is? I do know that rating something, following the podcast by clicking that plus sign and reviewing it does help, but we're not in the top 200, So, which is fucked up because we're, you know... Um, we're movers and shakers and we're moving the culture forward and you're a part of that. So like, you know, help us um, by leaving a review. It's free. It takes two seconds of your time. You can say whatever you want. We'll see it. So yeah, be nice. Love you. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, good. I mean, we, we, we uh, I, had, I was, I feel like I have been in a car for the past like seven <laughs> Girl, days. Me too. I've just been, I've, I've just been in a car. I've gone so many like little like road trippy places. Yeah. Uh, so obviously on Thursday we embarked on our voyage to our, our home, our home space. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, where we are, Salem, Rich, Massachusetts. Yeah. So it was the first time we had been back since recording the special. It was nice to go back again. Uh, we we went and, and met up with our friends Ani and Irish who who live in Boston. Yeah. And we did the Haunted Happenings Grand Parade, which has been a lifelong uh, dream of mine. And, you know, since I was, you know, having such a, a rough couple, I mean, basically since, you know, 2018, uh, <laughs> having a tough time, a which, which actually astrologically, apparently all Libras were, but I didn't really? know that. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, I was like, basically all the uh, cardinal signs uh, supposedly were going through it since 2017. I would say I wasn't really going through it until 2018, but you know, my relationship was, you know, falling apart in the end of 2017. So mm -hmm. I guess that's when it began. Nice. Um, and yeah, it, it, it's interesting to just hear an astrologer go, oh yeah, you guys have had a rough four years. And I was like, you know what? Yeah. Whether or not, you know, I go back and forth with my feelings on astrology, but sometimes like, I think what you can take from astrology is like, oh, that made me feel better yeah <laughs> at least know? i'm not crazy like sure. everyone was having a bad time that made me feel everyone. better yeah so i was like oh okay cool um but yeah we uh so i wanted to just like do some fun things and i was like one of the things i've always wanted to do is go to salem for the uh, haunted happenings grand parade and it was very fun um so and fun there were some fuckers we heard people go christian and Chris, and i was yeah. like oh my god thank you it marching in a parade is boy if you got any hint of narcissism it's the day for you it is fucking great everyone's just clapping for you There's yeah all these little kids waving at people they loved our costume corinne was the sluttiest one in the parade hands down yeah so fucking fantastic <laughs> well, the thing is, I suit a holes <laughs> halloween i thought okay so halloween is is a is a notoriously slutty holiday sure. if you want it to be hell yeah and, and this I is a in. literal halloween town right and so i thought a lot of kids there would there, be a though. lot of sluts but it was very much more family oriented very hot a lot of kids so christine and i were just bouncing through waving at dads who hadn't had this yes. much fun at the haunted happening parades the entire time that they've lived in Salem. This is for you, Daddy. Call me if you get divorced. Well, the thing is, I also bought this, like, because I, I, I just didn't have time to get a costume. I was I was too busy. I'm like, I'm, I, it's very hard when I need to get a costume before Halloween. I never I never can rise to the occasion. Um, <laughs> so I just like was looking through my closet and I was like, bitch, you live your life as a witch. You got to yeah. have something here that's appropriate yeah. for a Halloween parade. <laughs> so I found this one piece velvet bodysuit with just a bunch of holes in it that I bought aspirationally from Dolls Kill. Nice. When I was heavier, and I just bought, I just looked at it. Ah, uh, yeah. And I looked where the slits were, and I said, "You can get those parts in working order." <laughs> and then, and I put it in my closet, and I forgot about it. Manifest that shit, girl. And then I, and then I, and I, because I know you're not supposed to keep a lot of clothes in your closet that don't fit any longer. I disagree. Anytime I've put something in, and I'm talking about things that I am like two to three sizes too big for. <laughs> Every time I've put them in, I have at one point gotten my ass into them. Yeah. I did the same thing with a pair of Good American jeans that I put oh. it on, and I go, that, "I'm a." bad American because I can't get my fucking fat <laughs> ass into this thing. I fully agree with you, by the way. And I and I, and now these jeans are literally too big on me. Yeah. That's Whoa. how that's how, uh, that's how much I made them fit. Every wow. now and then you need to revisit those items of clothing yeah. to yeah. get yourself in check. And it's yeah. not that, like if you're living like a like a slob. Yeah, I don't like obsess over them. It's not like I like to, you know put it on, you know, try to put the jeans on every night at midnight and cry in a mirror. Right. Like <laughs> I just put them I just put them in and I forget. And then Set and forget it, baby. when my body Set changes, I go, oh, don't oh, you have 
have clothes. a smaller but don't right. you have a smaller pair of jeans somewhere that you thought maybe that you could get your ass into one right. day it's great nice. it's great yeah so i put the the bodysuit on and i'm talking about things where like you know you you have to ha- your your sides have to be thin my sides are never thin yeah. and i got it i got it in and then i walked around yeah. and i said you know what because the theme was heroes mm-hmm. um and so i wanted to dress up as marcia clark but i couldn't get to the I, because I had the wig. Oh, yeah, I was like going to use like, and a suit jacket. I was going to use an old Frankenfooter wig because Frankenfooter from Rocky Horror Picture Show and Marsha Clark do have the same hair. <laughs> the curly nice. kind of, right? Yeah. And then I and I just didn't have time to get to a fucking like secondhand store to get in, you know a nine, '90s suit because I live in the East Village and all the secondhand uh, stores are fucking fancy. And I was ugh. like, no, I need like a shit secondhand store. And so I was like, I'll be my own hero. Mm. And I was like the girl who bought a bodysuit that she was way too fat for and then got into ultimately. <laughs> without, you know, without doing anything crazy, you know? So you were yourself. I didn't starve myself. Yeah, I just, I just I, it was a slow burn. I just made it nice. happen. Yeah, so my hero it. was myself for getting into the bodysuit. <laughs> It looked great. I was an alien because aliens are my heroes. And if you're coming for us, aliens, take me with you. I'll go. Fuck this planet's a little wacky, huh? And please help us with the nuclear war. Um, yeah, I had a lot of. I had match the matching laser gun that I had with my alien costume. A lot of other kids had, and it was it was great. We had a lot of moments with some kids. They're like, oh, that lady's got the gun too, and I'm like, pew pew, kids, live yeah. your dreams. You know, it's you also- don't have to grow up when you grow up. You know, <laughs> be a kid forever. Yeah, I know. I'm real. I'm real weird to young people now. Like, I remember being at a, a fair um, with uh, you know who you know with several boyfriends ago, the zaddy, and uh, um, and I was just like frolicking around like eating a candy apple with like <laughs> my, this like unicorn in my hand that I had won and then I turned around and I said to the kids behind me I was like I'm almost 40 <laughs> and they, they looked they thought they're it like, was great they, Fuck yeah. they were like 17 they were like you look great girl and I mean like I also am not almost 40 and was not almost 40 at the time but it was I, I thought it was like a more dramatic thing to say yeah. <laughs> so and then obviously you know I was going to look a lot better if I was almost 40 <laughs> so, so it was it was a you know it's a fun time it's a good time talk to the kids yeah everyone talk to i mean within reason i've, I've been get arrested I've, yeah don't get arrested um i've been contemplating my attachment style since we had the um conversation with um the two therapists that i'm blanking on their name vanessa bennett and john kim yes exactly. my faves that yeah. was such a good episode yeah they're really, sweet i fucking loved them well vanessa bennett i was like ah uh, i was like i've never met a, a therapist who thinks you like me and i was like i might actually yeah. like uh call her up because i uh, that i was like you know, sometimes I wish I could do therapy on my on myself, but I can't do that. And it seems like she might be the closest I could get. Yeah, you guys were very similar. Yeah. She was talking about avoidant attachment. And I was like, oh, you know what? I think I think I might be an avoidant attachment. I thought I was anxious this whole time. But then, Corinne, you were saying before we started recording that there's an anxious avoidant attachment. I'm like, mm, that sounds like what it is. Right. Because basically how my brain operates and I've thank God I've been good at talking back to the thoughts before I act on them. Oh, so hard, but you guys can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. But basically, like if someone, you know, if I'm seeing somebody and they don't get back to me, you know, within a day, I'm like, well, they don't like me anymore. So I'm going to leave them before they leave me. I will hurt me before you hurt me, motherfucker. I'm like, oh, that's probably anxious avoidant. And then I just looked it up before mm. we started recording. And Mark Manson, he's very harsh with his wording, which I like. But what he has to say, <laughs> I don't go to him for I, I would never go to him for relationship. advice yeah. either. I don't I don't love yeah. the way he writes. Yeah. Yeah, what he said, anxious avoidance are low in confidence and less likely to express emotions, preferring to suppress them. It's not that. It's For me, it's not that. It's just I don't know how to fucking express them. And also, when you've been tricked your whole life by your fucking parents, you're like, am I cra- is this emotion real or is this something I'm making up? And whenever, I got to say, one piece of advice, my dad actually has been telling me this since I was like two. He's like, Christina, if you just waited five seconds mm-hmm. before responding, yeah. just wait five seconds your life will be easier. That's and I was advice. like, fuck you, dad. But um, it's really good advice. And within that five seconds of, of waiting, like I have the anxious thought or like, uh, you know, whatever. It's, it's usually, it's usually, it's always false. It's it's almost always false. Uh, but it's really important to take that five seconds when you have the thought before you react to the thought and just like pep talk with yourself. Like you really got to have pep talks with yourself. I think this should be an, uh, a common occurrence with all of you guys, with all of us. So, you know, this life is hard and it's, it's tricky to navigate. So yeah, that five second rule has been proving pretty beneficial. 
Um, yeah, I was like, that's one thing I am really good at. Like, I'll always like take a moment or like walk away, and then yeah. people get so annoyed because they want uh, they want instant a fight. gratification. Yeah, and I'm like, I need to think about this. Like, right. I need, and also, the more you pressure me to give you a response immediately, the longer I'm going to take. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, but yeah, I think I'm an anxious. Even avoidant. professionally, I think I feel like we've been in rooms where people like want you to like you know want something immediately, and I'm like, no, 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 no. I'll get back to you tomorrow. Yeah, I'm not giving you the answer right now. Yeah. Or if we're all in a meeting, I'm like, okay, we'll let you know right now. And Corinne's like, mm. yeah. I'm like, yeah, it is, it is very beneficial taking those seconds. And you can do it. Um, also, I was with my nephew this weekend and he was, he's seven. He's so fucking sweet. But he also says D's nuts. And I'm like, can you not? I mean, that's seven. the fun of being seven, yeah. I guess. <laughs> that's yeah. hilarious. I, well, I guess it made me think <laughs> if I fucking said that in front of my parents, they would have beat me. Like, I would have never heard the end of that. Yeah, uh, you had a bad childhood. You didn't get to say D's nuts. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you're right. <laughs> a, I mean, if again, long like, story short, to me, that's yeah. like so the, deprived. That's like the kid version of, of being able to get motorboated by a stranger. If you can't say D's nuts when you're seven, what's the point of living? Why be alive? D's nuts. I mean, it's funny to me right now. <laughs> yeah. I want to start actually incorporating it, it into my 37 year old language. Let, I was just there the, the day intro. he was born. I was there when he was born. I was like, this precious angel. But then I, so I then you saw D's nuts. I did, D's see, nuts. Those, I did see those nuts. But <laughs> this is going to be uncomfortable. Uh, uh, but like he goes to me, he goes, Aunt oh, Nina, do you have a YouTube? And I was like, no, no, I don't. Don't look at it. Please. He's obsessed with YouTube. Mm. He's obsessed with this YouTube guy who fucking makes like a hundred million dollars a fucking month. Ooh, who? And An influencer? Uh, I wrote it. Uh, it's a guy who basically he's got like 150 million subscribers, literally. And yeah. he d like buys people things like he'll buy all the cars on a car lot and then he'll sell them all for five dollars. Oh, so it was like really exciting stuff. OK, Because I was trying to do some research. I'm like, I obviously our demographic is not seven, but I was like, he Brantley's on YouTube all the time. So I was like, what do you like? Like, who do you right. follow and why? Like, I'm just curious trying to connect with the youth yeah the really young youth and he but that was one of his favorite youtube channels oh cool he also likes the um the hot ones channel um but yeah i was like oh what do you like about one. it and he's like oh when people get gifted stuff and they like they're surprised and i was like that's really sweet and then he was like do you have a youtube channel and i was like no and i never will so don't look for it thank you <laughs> Because I know he's going to ask me a lot of questions. And uh, as much as we talk about, like, these are conversations you could have with kids. If my fucking nephew found my YouTube channel and he started asking questions, I would just hang up on him. Yeah, that's uh, too many. There's too many things you can learn from the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I would say you need to be 12. I mean, if you're a girl and probably yeah. about 30 if you're a man to listen <laughs> yeah. to guys we fucked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, all right. Speaking of men, uh, our guest. Uh, he's an incredible stand-up comedian. Mm -hmm. We're so excited to have him on the show. You make sure you're going to check out his latest Netflix comedy special. It's called Nocturnal Admissions. We had such a lovely conversation. This is a very good episode. I yeah. love this episode. Please welcome to the show, Paul Verzi. Oh, my God. Comedian, yeah. We are here with stand-up comedian Paul Verzi. So excited to have you on. Non-murderer. Great. <laughs> yes. You only kill on stage, uh, 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 which is great. Excited to have you. Thank you for um, having me. And I really appreciate it. Yeah, man. Uh, one thing that you mentioned before we started that I'm like, oh, I really want to dive into this. So yeah. you have a family. Yeah. You you structured your life where you have a, a lovely family. Mm -hmm. You live you live a little bit outside the city. I think yeah. that's so great. Like you can have it all. Um, and if you're a man, yes. Yes, 100%. That's what I meant. Um, <laughs> but uh, so you have a 13 year old boy and yeah. a 10 year old girl. Yeah. Now, how, I, as somebody who was raised sexistly, um, I'm curious, um, what is it like to raise, like how do you raise them differently and what do you notice about them as people as you watch to watch a yeah. human go from the womb to a person is like got to be a wild ride. It's so different how like how different they are at not even just the age of the three years doesn't even matter because she's so she's just more like and my son is like my son has never gotten up, not on the honor. He's always been on the honor roll. He looks like a sweet kid. You showed he's, us photos. I'm like, he looks so he's a, sweet. He's a sweet, innocent kid. He's a good athlete, but he's even like a better student. Aww. Teachers are just like, he's just, one teacher said, like uh, someone said, one of the teachers said, I've been doing this 30 years. We get a Lucas like once every 15 years. Like that's, he's just, Whoa. yeah, like he's, 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 but he's very like, you know, he's sensitive. And one thing that was brutal that. was with all of the, with all of the school shootings, they have to unfortunately do mm. drills. And when my son was in second grade, Ugh. he was like, the teacher was like, this is what we need to do. And my son Lucas was like, wouldn't it make, I swear to God, I'm not even fucking, I just, I literally just thought of this as, as you asked me a question. 
he's like, wouldn't it make sense if we went out the back window and like said this thing that was like, everyone was like, yeah, like that was actually better than the fucking teacher. Wow. And she, and she actually told us in the parent teacher thing, like Lucas is like, so he's very aware of those things where Sophia, I don't worry about her as much feelings because she's just like my daughter will just she's very much like me where she wants it out on the table mm -hmm, so like nice. if me and if me and my wife stacy get into a fight mm -hmm. i was always the one that's like let's finish yeah. and stacy would just march into a room and close the door and i'd be like right. what the i would yeah. be like well, can we can we talk without a cry or a march right mm -hmm. I mean, obviously i'm talking on stage now yeah, in my yeah. new hour about how dumb my reaction to that was <laughs> like, what are we in first grade like and it never works like i think yeah, that that's gonna that's make gonna her, help yeah, that's gonna make her come out and go yeah. you know what i am a first grader let's yeah. <laughs> so, so, so <laughs> let me open up to you now that you said that. Yeah, like can we do it once without crying? So my <laughs> my son will go, I've noticed, will go into his room when he needs to process things mm. like his mother, where Sophia and I are the same, where it's like, I want to have it. a fun dinner. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I yeah. don't want to have an awkward staring at each other dinner. The, uh, yeah. I'm and not you good feel with, it. Yeah, like you ever date somebody and you're at a party and you're mad at them oh. or they're mad at you and there's or you just see a, a look, couple and there's just a look yeah. and you just know you're like this is not going to be <laughs> the, the ride's going to suck we're going to have to talk about this mm -hmm. and it's just a fake thing you're at a I barbecue yeah, I, and you're at like a barbecue holding <sighs> a drink and everyone's like oh this is and you're like you don't even know what my night's going to be yeah. <laughs> You know, you know. Yeah. So Sophia and I are like, let's get it up. But my, my daughter will just be like, I really didn't like how you made me feel. You hurt my feelings and I didn't like it. And mm. she'll just say it. Um, she's real tough. She's really, really strong. Where my son, he just will go like. He's processing he, time. He, they're, they're more of like the, let me break this down in my head first and then I can go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, some people respond like a polar opposite to to an argument. And uh, yeah. some people need time to take it in or, or it's because they shut down. And yeah. they need to just like be alone because it's too much stimuli but i'm i'm the opposite i'm like you and your daughter i'm like what's going on what's what's happening like let's yes. talk it out there's nothing we can't talk out like what <laughs> let's finish this and, but it's and, hard yeah. when the other person like when your spouse is someone who needs that time you want to be respectful of that I didn't know that about her. And then once I realized what she was doing, I was totally like, oh, she's not. Because in my mind, the march off would mean like, are we ever going to fix? Like, right. it was like a scary thing for me now that I look back. Like, mm. wait, you're marching off and we're not talking. So like, are we ever? Are you abandoning this conversation? But that's anxiety. Yeah. You know, like if you if you have the need to resolve everything immediately, like that's just anxiety. Right. Yeah. That's actually that's actually a great point where that's what I was worried about. Yeah. I'm going like, she's leaving this. Yeah. And I'm not resolving resolving it so now it's it's yeah it's it's anxious it's, it's it's there's tension but what she was really doing was maybe she was and i learned this too is maybe she was even figuring out what she her part in this was yeah what mine is what like where and that was when i was like oh okay like, you need to you take time to figure out. Fuck out yeah yeah it's also it's also time like because i'm a i'm a walk away and talk about it later person but it's also i do that so that if because if i was to resolve it in the moment i would scream you're a fucking cunt if i walk away i calm down i think about it logically and then i come back with something that's actually productive yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah no you gotta sure. learn how to fight or, or argue or have that's, have a disagreement. You've got to learn cute. each other's ways because otherwise you could take it personally if they're yeah. walking away or you could, all these things can go on in your head that have nothing to do with the actual motivation of that person. And it's like, whew, I, I read, I'm listening to a lot of Brene Brown lately and she defines words, which I think is so valuable. Yeah, yeah. Like discernment and what love is and what compassion really is and all that stuff. And one of the things she said is when you she gets into a lot of fights with her husband and she, <laughs> she needs to... I love presenting that as, listen, I was inspired by all the fights yeah. I get in with my with husband. my shit spouse. <laughs> uh, but she said, like, I'll say now that I know this about myself, I'll say, you know what? I need to take 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. I just need a quick walk, uh, you know, walk around the block mm -hmm. and then let's revisit because I just need to cool off. I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to come from a heated place while we're talking about something that's important. And I'm I, like, Ooh, that I could do. Yes. And, and no long relationship, productive relationship with children and a family will ever go. Like you have to understand me and my wife are about to have November will be 15 years. Okay. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Um, but you'll never have a relationship but you got to go in knowing like if you get fucking married you got to go in knowing there's going to be times where you're like is this gonna work right mm -hmm. yeah yeah and and then you just say to yourself but then there's something once you get through that there's something that happens where you're like no this is this is what i couldn't imagine i got into comedy knowing that i wanted this but it was almost like a naive thing knowing you wanted I, a family oh yeah like yeah. i was i was uh, you know 21 years old and, and it was act probably delusional yeah. because i'm just one of these 
people and, and, and my, my close friends would say like, I feel like I can do anything. Mm -hmm. And because of that, and sometimes I'll be like, oh, you know, here's Verzi fucking, but I would, you know, it's like, yeah, no, I'm going to have a family and I'm going to do this. And, and sometimes people are like, what are you, are you out of your fucking mind? But there was never not like the idea of being in my fifties alone in the city, running around doing spots mm, so is terrible. fucking <laughs> horrific. Like it yeah. is, you know, and you see that yeah. you see people running out and it's like, that's why nobody has an end. A lot of people don't have an end game. So what's your mm. end game? Okay. So you're going to the cellar, you're going to the stand, you're going yeah, here, yeah. you're getting your spot money. Great. Yeah. And you're going home. And what are you, where's the growth? Where, what, what are you ultimately trying to do with that? Right. Because we're all going to be old one day. We're all going to be old. You want to still be doing this exact thing by yourself. Right. I think the end game for a lot of people is suicide, honestly. <laughs> But for comics, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I You're like, as that. soon as they stop booking me, it's fucking <laughs> over. Done. It's fucking over. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah. I, Keep and, living with my veils. And I'm a private, like, th like you don't know how many comedians have said to me, like, like, <laughs> I come off a certain way and it's not that like I'm a fu I'm just a quiet private dude. Yeah. And when people when mm. I come across somebody that, you know, I have my insecurities and my anxiety and all of my stuff, but my circle is small. I got like mm. five people that like I would like have at my house with my kids. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. And sometimes people take that as I'm just not a comedy community guy. Like, I'm not. I always right. say, like I'm not doing like a comedy softball game like are you fucking right. like, I'm oh. not doing that. I'm, yeah. I'm going to do what I love that's to smart. do. Yeah. No, I'm going to do what I love to do. And, and and get better at it because that's what I put my mind to do and then I go home with my family but I'm not just because I live that life like com I, there were some people that resented the, there were some comedians that I could feel the resent I'm talking younger oh. right? yeah younger I remember I'm, I'm not going to mention a name but this female comedian came up to me one time and it always stuck with me and I knew what she was doing and I wasn't I'm not the type of guy to be like, fuck Feed you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, and, you know, and I don't really, you know, do, do shit like that. I don't go out and drink and get into argument. I don't do that. But she says something to me and, it, and I realized it was a projection. Yeah. She said to me once, mm -hmm. she goes, hey, Paul, like, so what do you got? Like six kids now? I'm like, no, still two. Always two. Yeah. It's been two. Like, you fucking want kids. Right. Don't fuck. Uh, <laughs> right. Right. You want right, right. Kids. Like, the way Mr. she. Mr. Family the, Man The way there. she did it. I, <laughs> the way she did it. I know what she did. Yeah. And, and I could read. That's one thing that I definitely pride myself on. I can read. what When she was like, so what do you got? Like, six kids now. I, I realized. I'm like, no, you're living in a studio. Yeah. And yeah. you don't have. You, you Maybe you want that because you're, you know. And I wasn't going to do that. And you know what? I've learned as I got older. Like, whatever's going on with her. Like, that's fine. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not going to hate on that. Like. Mm -hmm. That's just something that people project their feelings and they maybe do. she didn't know how to handle it at the time, but there were, and then I've had some, you know, some, some dude, some male comics go like, Hey, how's your family? And I could like read in their face that they were like, they did. I was like, I literally wanted to go. You don't care. Like yeah, the you way you just Why are you asking that, me? like the way you asked me was like, you yeah, just kind of yeah. don't care. Yeah. So you stay out of the bullshit. Like, like how, yeah, I, do, I stay out of the bullshit, and, but sometimes that would make people think that I'm, you know, like either standoffish or I think uh, like, Oh, you like, no, but that's really not the case. Like yeah. if somebody comes up to me and like, I, I feel like I'm a warm dude. Yeah, you know? you're very friendly, very and, friendly and, but, and but approachable. I, but I, I don't really, I don't play that shit. Like yeah. I, don't, I don't like being there when, when somebody tries to project or say it's shit. It's like, like hot that. potato with insecurities. You, like, I'm really, that's actually what it is. And, yeah. and I'm not really good around, uh, listen, we all have insecurities, but I'll never put my insecurity on I'm not going to throw them at you. Yeah, my, yeah. my insecurity will be my internal fucking weakness mm -hmm. that yeah. I have to deal with. But I'll never be at a place and make you and all of a sudden. I want to make you feel smaller because. Like, by yeah, Christina my... feels like shit. Why? I don't know. She was just talking to somebody that made her. That I'll never do that to somebody. Yeah. But, uh, on, you know, I punish myself. I'll punish myself <laughs> with insecurity. That's the way to do what it. What are you insecure know? about? But um, you know, I, I've really gotten better with it. I, w I was just insecure with um. I guess I guess if I'm going back, my family had like a brutal, brutal divorce when I was oh, five. Brutal. Oh, brutal. Oh, that sucks. Brutal. Divorce in and of itself is like, traumatizing, I was but a five, brutal one. My brother was ten. It was the early eighties, oh. and it was brutal. Oh. Like, in what way? Just like put it this way, my mother and father were never under the same roof after their divorce Oof. when I was five until my wedding when I was wow. 30. Oh my they god! Fucking hated each other. It was, so it was like, <laughs> oh yeah, god, it was Love like haters. So yeah, close, man. Yeah, and you know. And, you know, my dad's got that Sicilian shit. Like, it's just, you know, and, okay. and my mom was, you know, my mom remarried and stuff. So I think 
I always felt like something would happen to my mother. I didn't have my dad there. So my stepdad was cool, but there was something that as a young that was taken away. Yeah, stability and, and, and the, safety. The, the stability and safety was 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 taken away. That's perfect, actually. Yeah, because that kid needs that to thrive. Yeah, and so what I would do was I was able to, you know, I was able to tell stories that people liked and I was able to be funny and I played sports and I was like, so that would kind of give me, like almost like my security came from like friends and outside because mm. I didn't have it inside. Um, yeah, so then I guess now I've kind of learned, I've kind of learned that everybody mm. is insecure and everybody has their shit and everybody goes through that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it took some time to, to do that. And now, <clears throat> excuse me, I just want to tell my kids, like I tell Lucas and Sophia, like you're going to go into a situation where you feel less than, you feel, you know, maybe not as worthy in your mind. Yeah. But I said, everybody's going to feel that. And you, yeah. are, and you are that, you know, I tell my daughter, so, and my son. So like, I just want to put the stuff that I've learned because of the stuff that happened to, to let them know that like it's okay. Yeah, you know? yeah. So that's that's one thing that I'm doing and, and you know, trying to be with them as much as I can. That's the hard mm. part. Yeah. Is, you know, I want to make this job, I want to balance it. Yeah. And I was able to get good enough and be able to figure out how to do it in a certain way and still not have to do a thousand spots a week, you know, mm -hmm. still come down a few days and do that, but then be home yeah. and have them feel me home. Yeah. You when know? you met your wife, did you know that she was like, did you know immediately or how soon into the relationship did you know you could have a family with this woman? So here's the crazy thing about my wife. My wife went to the rival high school that I went to <laughs> Aww. and I dated her best friend <laughs> for four for for all through high school. Oh. I and, know several people who ended up marrying and, like the best friend. And yeah. never and never. So I would. So I was dating this girl in high school, and uh. I would always hear her say, "Oh, my friend Stacy that I went to junior high with, but she went to the other high school." Uh. So I kept hearing about right. So then that relationship ends, and then I was working as a busboy at an Applebee's, and a manager at that Applebee's happened to be best friends with my wife as well. Wow. That went to the same high school. Uh. So my wife just kept, so, but I knew of her, and then finally, you know, so then I moved to Queens, she moves to Jersey City, we're just friends. Right. She said, hey, I, I hear you're in Queens, I'm in Jersey City, let's hang out. And then I tried to like be more, and she kind of like had me in like this. Oh, she tried to just be friends with you. Yeah, that was she. Should, she was. She wasn't listening to guys we fuck podcast. She, we would have been like, no, not. he's not interested in me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't yeah. need another friend. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and it's funny you said that. So, what happened was one weekend I was like, "What are you doing?" And she was just kind of giving me the "Let's be friends," and I like mm -hmm. take her to the movies. I'd be, like, "You want me to drive you home?" And I would get like, you know, we'd get drunk and like she would like we'd like fool around a little bit, but it was just like a, it was never I could tell it was it, a relationshipy. No, it was no, it was okay. it, yeah. So then I remember. The weekend I said, I'm done. This is a true story, right. man. I said to my older brother, I go, yeah, I said, you know, I, I feel like if I don't hear from this week, like this is just like, I guess, and my brother, my older brother just goes, Paul, like if that doesn't work, like it's her loss, you'll be fine. Like he said something along the lines of, you'll be fine. Like let's go yeah. to the movies. And we were going to see this Chris Rock movie. And he's like, let's just go to the movies. And I'm like, yeah. And then that, that night, I got a text from her and it just said, I miss you, which she never did. Oh, tables I, have turned. And, and when I got she that, felt she pulling away. And I, I think so. She yeah. probably did because women fucking know. They, they don't got to be in the same room with you. That right? They don't got to be in the same state as you. Mm -hmm. They feel when you pull away. That's even if nothing intuition. That's what we're talking happens. about. It's so Wild. fucking annoying. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so annoying. But what's crazy but is it's you guys have that shit. Yeah, we do. And, and I see, like, I, I literally, like, my daughter came home one time and she goes, now nah, that little girl, she was doing something to me. She didn't say, I know what she was doing. I'm like, what do you mean? And she goes, no, she said something, but the reason she said it was because she wanted this reaction because she knows mm -hmm. how I And I'm going, you're fucking nine. Like, yeah. you're, you're 10. Yeah. And she, and where my son would just be like, I don't know. I don't care. Like, yeah, leave, me, right, leave me alone. Right, right. But she knew what these people were. And I think it's the same thing. Like, yeah. Well, fe and if also the female brain, we use a left and right hemisphere interchangeably a lot more often. Like um, the male brain scientifically is you're either one hemisphere at a time. So, that right? we, so that's why a lot of times women can handle like multitasking or something like raising a family and then doing yeah. the, and then going to drive to school or then doing the work and then we can handle multiple things at the same time is because yeah we just have more um uh, we're also better at cheating neuroplasticity <laughs> yeah we Men hide it sloppy ass yeah, cheaters yeah. oh my god they'll yeah. come home well, with but like, that's why <laughs> that's one of the reasons why like you hear these stories of this guy that's like yeah. comes home with lip lipstick marks on his cheek and you're like are you fuck what is your, yeah. what what my whole thing it was cheating is and this is a like because I'm, I'm just not a cheater I never understood it because I would just if I was gonna, if I was gonna do that if mm -hmm. I would to do that I would just get out of there like yeah, I, agree, I agree with cheaters you, like 
yes. the game and the thrill of see, getting caught. See, it's like it's an almost, gambling addiction. That's, well, see, that's the thing. Somebody that cheats is not necessarily doing it for any other reason. Under, it's like a psychotic. It's like not personal, oddly enough. It's a weird, like people that I'm like, yeah, like I, I talk to people that do it. There's like a sociopathic people that like continuously do it. I remember one time oh, this guy. serial cheaters, yeah. I, I remember one time I was talking to this guy and I was like, uh, he's like, yeah, man, I'm going to try to get with that girl. And I was like, wait, I thought I heard you say you're in a relationship. And I, he's like, yeah, I've been in a relationship for nine years. <laughs> and, I, and, and just. As if then, nothing like, was fucked up but like, about he that. He just said it like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he's just, like, I'm going to go get bread at the store. Yeah, yeah. Like, he yeah. was just, oh, no, of course. I've, I've been in a relationship for nine years. But anyway, dude, that. And I was just like, that, I, I, I'm just not built like that. <laughs> neither. Yeah. Well, me neither. And it's it, it, we talk about this a lot, especially as of late. It's it's a, it becoming extremely difficult to be a female comedian. But it's not like because women aren't funny. It's because I have to. I have so many more grown male friends than the average 36 year old woman. And the amount of people I know who are openly cheating on your girlfriend, none of my close friends, um, is uh, it's staggering. And it not only makes me feel like bad and like complicit in, be, uh, you know, doing damage against other women, but then it makes me very distrustful Sad. of other yeah. guys that I would be dating because I go, are they just openly talking about cheating on me when I'm right, not yeah. here? Right. Because that happens. Sure. Yeah, when you, of course when you, it does. When you have somebody t talk shit to you about somebody else and that means they're going to talk shit about you yep. yeah yeah, like, yeah so it's the same thing with cheating and stuff mm -hmm. like that i'm just not built like that man i just would never you know i respect my wife too much and and i made a decision and like that's really what it like i couldn't imagine like what kind of that's so romantic please needs... write that on a valentine's day card i made a decision and i'm not going to go against it no matter how many <laughs> times i think of it. <laughs> no, that's well, I, think for, I think people are serial cheaters that's that's a that's a different game yes. if you're a serial cheater you're just constantly looking for this hit of validation from anywhere you can get it and you're that's the, the addiction that's that's what i equate is. that's a gambling addiction yeah, alcoholism I, I, I do too i think you know and it's just really like it's really disrespectful to like it is <laughs> but they don't look at that that way like they truly don't like your friend who just said like oh yeah of course i'm in a relationship or not like he doesn't well after having all these conversations with guys who cheat i'm like <sighs> you really aren't you you aren't in your head going fuck my wife or fuck my girlfriend <laughs> like you're not it's it isn't that's why i say it's not that's, personal yeah, it's no, just not personal no it's it's yeah which like, is interesting because yeah. cheating feels so personal but really if you get down to the psychology of it they're doing it because they're fucked up and then you go oh one more thing that's not about me i know i hate this <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no i'm not i'm not uh I don't, I'm not good with that. I'm yeah. not, you know, I mean, listen, I never judge anybody, but it's just not how I am. Yeah. yeah. You know? Now, when you, so having a, a son and a daughter, did you go into raising kids with your wife? Did you say like, did you have like a chat? Like, how do we want to raise our kids? Mm. You know, or like, well, I think one thing that it would be appropriate to say on your show is how this went down with her because of the lifestyle that I chose. Right. You know, I was going to do this. And one of the best things I ever did, one of the best fucking things a man could do is to, is let people know the truth and stick to it. And we were in a diner in New York. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing black rooms and contests. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. had no manager. I had 12 minutes that's of material. A, that's rough. I'm doing contests. Dude, I'm doing Con yeah, contest. like literally contest, festival contest, yeah. entering things. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Doing, I'm doing Just throwing shit against the wall. I mean, sticks. I literally, I literally came up in New York City. This is the truth. I came up like eight mile style. I would yeah. be one of the only white souls in the yeah. room. Mm -hmm. It was two hundred fifty. That's how you get good at comedy. Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> two hundred fifty black audience members yeah. going. You better be funny. Exactly. Yeah. And and we're gonna let you know if we don't, don't think you pander, are. Don't pander. Don't yeah. cater. Don't be insecure. Right. Right. And and I would do that. And I was sitting down and I was, I was, you know, being funny and being a good comedian are two different worlds. Yes. I was funny from the beginning. I, I, I was not a good comedian from sure. the beginning, you know, yeah. you know. And so we sat down with her. My wife, you know, beautiful, great grades, could have went to any school she went wanted to in the country. I was sitting down with her and I was like, look, I was like, you can be with a doctor. You could be with a lawyer. You're beautiful. You're smart. Um, but I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but I that made her so horny. I, so I, I got horny just listening to like, that. wow, a man with a plan. <laughs> so I said to her, I said, Jesus. I said to her, I looked her in the face. I said, I could be well off in my 30s or 40s or broke but I'm doing this shit so you need to talk to whoever it is the fuck you gotta talk to your mother whoever sit down and talk to them but just know I'm doing this mm -hmm. and she went to her mother and her mother was like yeah it's not a good idea and and obviously uh, you know what I said to her mother her mother was like you know I, I still I was like yeah you didn't know who I really was though. yeah she, and to and, be fair uh, she didn't but, to be fair too if a mom had to choose a was, suitor for her uh, daughter well, she probably wouldn't <clears throat> choose a comic if my daughter comes home even me now exactly and and I was like no I was like well, but what, a guy uh, who believes in I'd himself be like, Where, where's he perform I want to see his you know I want right, to see his right. set no um, but, but that, it's exciting when someone <clears throat> wants more for themselves yes you know, and it's rare to find that in men yeah yeah no I just I don't want someone 
someone who's like, um, when, I, when I'm thinking of getting married to them, they're finished with all the things they're going to achieve or yeah. they're already like right. complacent. And like, and I think that's like something about like, okay, so like if you're marrying a doctor, you know, you're marrying a doctor, but he's probably all he's going to ever be is a doctor. Yeah. And yeah. that's not exciting. Wait, wait, yeah. You could be a huge failure or the most famous person in the world. You could be in movies. World. You could be in cartoons. My nipples are you could hard, be you know? for the Emmys. You could be fucking a comedian's life. Yeah. <clears throat> and got- also like women like, I think, I think there's something about like women kind of like, like, like living in a car sometimes and then living in a mansion and like going through the whole, like, hey, you never know you're going to get that whole fucking Annie story. Yeah. Anything but boring. Yeah. 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 I remember we got into a fight one time and I was like, what are you going to be with a fucking accountant? Like, Ugh. yeah, <laughs> so that's, that's, that's the sickest comeback. burn that you can give. And yeah. my best friend is an accountant that's and a- she okayed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a sick burn. That's, yeah, that's hilarious. No, but, um, so wait, your, your question was, uh, um, well, when you go in, when you have kids, yeah. you talk about how you want to raise them before a the kid plan. pops out. Yeah. Like, you know, one thing is like, we always, always like it's my wife is very and, and I am too like you're never gonna you're always always gonna n- not be the bully you're yeah. never like that you're never gonna if, if you ever and and we've had incidents where my son has because I was a type of guy when I was growing up like I I moved a lot and stuff I actually one time I bullied the bully mm. I saw a girl mm. that was friends of mine she was crying she had really bad eyesight mm-hmm. and she, her book would be like this and Aww. people would make fun of her Aww. And I fucking found out who the kid was, and I made him go up to her, apologize. Oh, that's a good way. That's not. A, be, made, it's better than beating the shit out of the guy. No, I made him get on his hands and knees and bark like a dog before wow, he left. Wow, that's fun. And then I was did I really? touch him. Yeah. Wow. I was like, it's, and he did it. He did it. I was like, dude, you're not. That's leaving. a commanding I like, presence. I was like, all I'm not gonna. I said, I'm not gonna hurt you. I said, but you're gonna get on your knees and you're gonna bark like a dog and say you're sorry, or I'm gonna hurt you. And I he will did hurt it. you emotionally. And she, dude, you know what's funny? Yeah. I performed in Boston many years after, and she was there and she remembered it. Oh yeah. Well. Yeah, she's gonna remember that her whole life. Yeah, she yeah, remember, yeah, that kind of shit. But like, I always we tell like Sophie and Lucas, you never if you see anybody getting bullied like yeah, that, yeah. you never judge anybody. You never, you always treat the the number one thing, and it's so simple and corny, but it's true. Is really truly treat somebody how you want to be treated. When yeah. you walk into a party and you don't know anybody. Right, and yeah. you have that feeling. Treat that person the way you would want to be treated if you walked into that party and yeah. didn't know anybody. And that's that's how. So you know, my wife is incredible she's more tough than me i'm a little bit <laughs> really you know, my kids are like my kids are getting a little spoiled okay you know like, how so because you know and i that me, netflix money <laughs> well me, me and my me and my wife grew up like my mom didn't make a lot of money okay. they had, like kind of yeah they were You're great a kid we with had, a bank we, account we, we, we had no. food we had food you know and, and roof over our head nice but you know they weren't we wouldn't go like my kids go to sushi dinners on monday wow you know we kind of have like you know a, a nice cars like it's you know and my yeah. kid like my kid said to me the other day he was like he, he wanted me to take him like fishing in panama or another <laughs> Whoa! Because he's watching you YouTube channels yeah. where guys are catching like sharks. I go, buddy, we got a pond. Yeah, you know, let's he, go down to the lake. That's yeah. so funny. Yeah, he's like, he's like, what car Panama. am I gonna get when I'm sixty? You know, so Whoa, okay. we gotta. And let's he's a slow down that road. And, and yeah. he's a sweet kid, but th- we have to watch both of them kind of living a life that we, you know, that we didn't live, but we worked very hard for. Yeah, yeah. You know, we worked very hard for, and and uh, so, but we just teach them like, and they're really good, well adjusted to treat everybody the way that they want to be treated. Yeah. That's the best way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, and know, I wish my parents told me when I was growing up that the bully is often the kid that's hurting the most. Yeah. I wish I knew that because then I would they wouldn't have power over me. Yeah. You know, I'd feel bad for them, but in a way that was more compassionate, not like pity. But yeah. I think now, though, with technology and all this social media stuff, kids oh do my know God, a bullying lot. Pervasive, it's pervasive. Right. But I, it does show that the bully's weak. Uh, yeah. This is the first time in history that if you're smart and you grow up, you could be like, oh, this kid's just hurt. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You could find out for yourself. <laughs> like you could actually have that you have burn. To go to their house. Like you could actually have that burn and be like, dude, who, who did, what happened yeah. to your dad? What's yeah. your dad do? You know, um, yeah, so I, no, I had it, I, I didn't have it, like, I don't want to act like people had it harder than me, but through shit with the with the divorce and moving a lot and stuff like that, I had to yeah, was you your, know, make that was adjustments. Your story. That was yeah. my shit. Yeah. 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 Uh, has Have any of your kids gotten bullied? Either of your kids gotten bullied? No, not, not I yet. I would lose my fucking but, mind if someone said anything to my sweet baby uh, angel and I don't even have kids yet no no it's it's but like he'll come off that like kids suck Cause yeah because you could what you could really tell this is one thing that I've learned you can tell the parents oh of yeah course. Cause, cause because they learn it dumb kids kids are just little parents. human beings and yeah. a human beings not overall great what, you yeah. know the, my kids are at the age where I can like like or dislike their friends now. right yeah <laughs> yep, yep, yep. yeah yeah it's not appropriate to hate a four-year-old I'm just like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's but they're, weird. They're, yeah they're 13 I'm like who's coming really no but like <laughs> dumb kids have dumb parents mm-hmm. yeah of course it, yeah you know? yeah and and the, and the and the shitty kids on the bus they say shit like the other day 
um, my son came off the bus and he was like, Dad, what's a... And he was like, real derogatory shit against, oh, shit. Gay, against gay people. Like, oh, you no. Know, like, yeah, yeah. Like, it's just like saying, what's this word mean? What's that word mean? And like, why was oh, this? my baby, and I'm no. Going, and, I'm, and I'm going, what? And I was just like, tried to defer to my wife. I'm like, well, let's see what... You know. yeah. <laughs> Let me ask mommy that one. <laughs> yeah, like... That's so funny. It, but, but you could tell, like, you could tell who the shitty kids are and you could tell who's going to be like, hey, Lucas, Sophia, let's smoke this, do these drugs. Yeah. Or, or let's smoke. I could tell who that's going to be. Yeah. So I'm trying to tell them now. Yeah. I'm like, dude, that, that, that's no good. That right. kid is no fucking good, you know? Right. So that, that's kind of my fear. Yeah. Do you, know. do you have a conversation with your kids? I was asking my brother this uh, last time I talked to him because he has a seven-year-old. But like yeah. bad touch, what a bad touch is. Like meaning if a stranger comes up and like is assaulting you, like, or, you know what I mean? Oh like, yeah. Like, like if somebody puts, yeah, no, they know, they know that we're just like, look, if somebody's hands, like, I think they know. Yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We've kind of had it without really doing any <laughs> <We>, demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> that's so classic. We've talked about it without ever talking about it. Yeah. Like so, it was just like, if you know, you, if someone goes like that and you go, uh, <laughs> you tell me, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Copy well, that. My, my daughter, like would, my son too, but my daughter just would be like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, she's. I think it's also like out in society enough that like you, the parents don't have to do as much of the heavy lifting for sexual assault. Yeah, I've but, seen too many yeah. documentaries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where people just did it and like it went on for years and no one knew that it was wrong it's, and they were per brutal. persuaded because kids are so you know impressionable. Well, there's like old TV shows where like you know the boss is like tapping the secretary on the ass like it's a normal thing to right. do in the workspace. <laughs> yeah. Did you see that thing where the guy? It, oh my god, I forgot the name of the documentary. A guy kidnapped his kidnapped the son of somebody that they knew oh. and took him away did something and then a kid called and the kid's like he he molested me he raped me yeah mm -hmm. and then when the guy was arrested the guy the father was like acting like he was at a phone booth and when the guy walked by he just put a gun to his head and killed oh, him oh wow yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he i just, didn't see that he just yeah. turned around i forgot yeah. the name of it but he wow. just he weighed and and you actually see on the on the news Papa footage Bear. on the news footage of the guy like you know when they you see the guy like walking taking through cuffs, yeah. like yeah taking in cuffs he was just walking and and as the news was going <gasps> and the, and the father was literally just on a payphone <gasps> waiting Pretending just turned around and oh, he made wow. sure there was no mistake and uh guess how much guess how many days that he, he did in jail for killing the pedophile? Yeah. How many? Zero. Nice. He got out. He got. He, Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, I'm actually gotta, really surprised. Gotta, yeah, I, I am. Too. They're not really allowed to do that. There was another. <laughs> you know, shoot someone in the head as they yeah, walk like on somebody by. Somebody listening to this podcast is <laughs> yeah. like, oh, I got a couple people I'm going to fucking clip. No. Zero. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, something, I think. I just read an article where a teacher I mean, got 41 years in prison for feeding his students semen cookies. And I go, what? listen, yeah. you should go to, yeah. listen, you should go to prison for that. But that's like way more time than I actual think rapists are But I think that's doing. worse than murder. <laughs> <laughs> that's because you have kids yeah <laughs> i go Dude, ah. semen cookies that's like who that i've definitely eaten semen i didn't want to i mean sick. whatever but to yeah the but voluntarily you knew it was cum where? no i mean i feel like there's definitely been semen in my mouth like there's it, you know things are flying around in the atmosphere we've had cum of i've been a comic for i mean wait, how long things that are flying around the, wait a minute so there's like, like fecal, so there's fecal matter in the air i just feel like there's been cum places that's like grazed our lips or something that you know, we don't know about I, I like 100 percent. i just bought this coffee before yeah. I came here and I walked by and there was like a, a, an artist doing graffiti and I like love because I used to just do graffiti and yeah. do it with it and, and I looked over dude it smelled so bad <gasps> that it actually it I felt I actually it was I the saw. first it was actually and that, see I'm bad with I'm bad with shit like that smells like bad yeah like but it was so bad that you, it was like the first time that a it smell actually I actually felt the smell yeah like, <laughs> Like, like it was like I felt the air of it and I literally started gagging before I walked in the building. I started gagging. I can't handle yeah, yeah, yeah. like I was way better. We always laugh about this. I was way better with the kids when they had shitty diapers. I'm fine with that. Yeah. But when like I remember one time my wife had this friend and we're not uh -oh. they're not really friends anymore but they go Paul hold the baby right and they would always compare this kid to my, my son I'm not kidding my son was this beautiful like Nordic looking blonde <laughs> hair smelled blonde. so and, good and, 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 the, and the other baby like was fucking horrible <laughs> and not horrible I don't say but like just, just aren't like, they look alike and I'm like nah they don't but hold them <laughs> yeah. hold them Paul hold them and I remember holding this kid right this kid that's not my kid I was uncomfortable but it was like one of those things where you get handed a yeah. baby and I just saw like 
just like like drool, like vomit drool come out of his mouth. Yeah, yeah. Because I, it wasn't your kid, you did repulsed. It, because it wasn't my kid, yeah. I was so... I, but if it was my kid, I wouldn't have loved yeah, it. But, right. but having it not be your kid and yeah. seeing that... Yeah. Extra I, gross. I, if, if I could have, in the moment, I would have been like, get this baby the fuck away from But his mother was right there. <laughs> but I'm not good with shit like that or like smells like that and stuff. It's yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. It's brutal. It's a good thing you live outside the city. Oh, my no, God. Th that's the thing. The New smells York's here will assault you. It's, yeah. it's, you will get assaulted with smells inch by inch. 100%. Yeah. yeah like, yeah, you yeah. guys got to move out of out of here. I live on the water in Greenpoint now, and I fucking oh, love it. Okay. There's very limited smells. There's and I've just very learned how smells. to eat a Dunkin' Donuts breakfast sandwich in one hand and see a man jerking off um, with my left eye. <laughs> she's, like, I'm she's, fine with that. She's I'm more down. New Jersey. I don't yeah. know. That's, not, there wasn't a lot of good smells. Have you guys literally? No, seriously. Like you've literally seen somebody jerking off on a literally like, like that's multiple like that. so times. many times. Are you serious? Yeah. On the subway, on the street, in but a like car. doesn't even phase no, me but, anymore. But I know. I just go there. He is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, but is it one of those things where it's like covered and like you just see a motion or you sometimes, actually see? A, I've seen a guy just taking a shit in a squat, like a oh yeah, yeah. the shit. <laughs> but the masturbating sometimes there's a coat over and he's not even trying to hide it. He's literally <laughs> going like this, like he's a. You guys are dick. talking about it like it's seeing a. Hot Hot dog yeah, I know. Woman, Paul. Well, yeah, well okay. I was so mad because one time when I lived in Murray Hill, the, uh, uh, the, a guy Murray was Hill's jerking bad. off in my favorite McDonald's and they had just oh, redone it. McDonald's. And I was oh, like, come on. Like, look at the, the bathroom. construction of this place. They yeah, just fucking redid yeah. it. Do in the bathroom, buddy. Dude, and That's there's something about a McDonald's. Want. People feel more comfortable jerking off there than a Wendy's or a Burger King. And I don't know what That's it is, but they need to change fucking their fucking hilarious. publicity. And it's true because I like America's Cup Because if you should be jerking off in Chick fil A, like that place is incredible. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Chick Fil A is immaculate. There's no jerking off going there. Like they wouldn't let. And plus, God's watching over Chick Fil A. Oh right, so he protects it. <laughs> protects it from all the cum. What's the What's the penalty on that? Like jerking get, off? Yeah, like in public. Like that's a jail. That's got to be uh, indecent exposure. I imagine. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. that's got to be like a couple nights in the. A couple nights yeah. in the slammer. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you in for, buddy? Oh, oh that L train. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that night L train. I'm so confused how this guy just shot someone and yeah. didn't go to jail. Was there like an explanation for it? I, or is I, that what the whole documentary is about? Well, I think it was kind of, I don't know if it was kind of like the uh, time to kill movie, like where you could say like a, either, I don't know if it's like a temporary. Oh, temporary. Or, 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 I don't well, know. And you could say a parent with their child being sexually molested. I mean, that is probably that plus your kid dying is two, two of the worst things that could happen. And to a I think it matters the state. Because uh, if you're in like Texas or Georgia yeah, or the, something, you could probably be like people will be like a little more or and I think a judge also has a say. I was gonna say yeah. I think the judge was like we're just gonna give you this. Uh, one. Uh, uh, like if somebody's a complete <laughs> monster, and I think yeah. there was another situation where somebody killed a pedophile at the thing, and they did very little time. Okay. So I think that there are, are there are situations where you know like I think New York will it would be kind of you'd go away for a yeah, while. Yeah, you would. But you would. It, I think in other states they yeah. would be Florida. Like, <laughs> eh, we get it. Yeah, should have shot him. Twice. There's a lot of pedos. They're like alligators. You gotta get rid of them. Yeah, uh, but no, that's like that's the ultimate. Like that was the that's the ultimate thing that I tell my kids is like I don't care. I'm really weird about them crossing the street. It's weird. Yeah, they get hit by a car. Like crossing the street, I'm like I, they're like Dad. I know how many times you're gonna say look both ways. That and also um, people talking to them. Like strangers? Yeah. Like yeah. somebody coming up going, hey, like, I'm like, it's going to be like, even if, like, unless it's a family friend that we've known forever. Yeah. You're, sometimes you, those are the, the, the biggest yeah, risks. Uh, family friend. It's always a family about, friend. What, wait, what made you say that? Like, so you sat down and had like a formal conversation with your kids? Like if a, if a grown up starts talking to you out of the yeah. blue? Yeah. We sat mm. down. We sat them down and was like, look, yeah. there's going to be people that like may act a certain way. You have to understand you cannot trust. Even now, you know, we got a nice place in the country. I'm like, when we're gone. You can, it's funny the rules you come up with, like you can't eat. You can't eat because you can't choke. <laughs> right. Oh, wow. No, you can't eat. If you're home alone. Soft foods only. Kids don't choke like, that well, often. I know, but I don't want to be the asshole who They're didn't say it. They're a little too old to and be then, choking. Like, yeah. I know, but I didn't want to be the asshole to say, you know what sucks? Yeah. My kid's going to be like 35, yeah. married. Like <laughs> Not the eating when no one else is home. He's and you're like, wait for his wife. What this? happened? And my dad. So just, funny. Yeah, so like, but like if anybody knocks on the door and they're like, hey, Amazon. Like, no, you don't open the door. Yeah, I don't open you know, the door. You know, like, so like just just stuff like that, you know, and sometimes I don't want to say sound like nuts or, but like you, you the shit you worry about with kids is wild yeah, yeah. and we're also we're exposed because of the internet and we like know how like we can learn any skill in like a matter of seconds if we look it up on the internet too. like we're also more uh more well versed in the stories of terrible people like so it's yeah. you know that that can't you can't help but have that not like, linger in your mind when you're raising kids Do you ever think about that like that in our world 
Like the people we're around and like some are very lovely people, but we're in a world and a business. Especially of, in the city. Of truly Psychopaths. mental illness. Yes. Oh, I oh. think about it literally like, every like, day. Like, it's mental, pervasive. like yeah. mentally ill. Yeah. Damaged. They don't even know that they are. That's, that's the worst. worst. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, Jinx. That's the, that is like, it's grating. They're like delusional and yep. they say things and you're just going, oh my God. And when you reflect back yep. to them that you're being a little mentally ill now and when they see that and they don't want to see that, oh, it's game over. You're fucked. Yeah, yeah. No, People get really... Uh, had, oh, so now you have one child of yours is 13, so teenager. Have yeah. you had a sex talk? No, because he's not. He knows. He knows. He's, this is like, <laughs> no, no. He's so he's, Italian. No, no, because he's, he's, he's seen things. He gets it. <laughs> he knows. That's funny. Yeah, he knows. He knows. He knows, he knows not I'm, to put anything anywhere. No, he. Um, he's at the. I think like now because it was different than when I was young. Like when I yeah. was younger, it was like fifth, sixth grade. Now and and a lot of other oh right, kids, he gets it from school too. Yeah. But a lot of kids like in the in the area or friends, it seems like seventh, eighth is when they start to really notice. Because like yeah, fourth, fifth, it was like oh dad, what are you talking about? Right, and and, and they were Cooties. serious. Like yeah, they were, yeah. and they were serious. Like feel like no, she's so annoying. I was having like crushes that, on boys when I was like six. I think girls uh, cr start crushing earlier than guys. I think like part. you know. Like my, I hear my daughter talk to her little friends mm. and they'll be like, you know, so-and-so did this today and so-and-so did that. So I think they're more aware. We're also, so when you think about it, we're also socialized to care more about boys from earlier, from the things that we're watching. Yeah. Uh, and Disney princesses. Yeah, like that's yeah, like yeah. the goals that we're taught to aspire to. I, which is I, why yeah, we're behind. G.I. Joe wasn't fucking worried about getting getting a wife. Yeah, they were murdering. Yeah. yeah they're yeah. fighting for our country. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, he's uh, I would say he's starting now to just be like, oh, like, because I say, I'll say, like, is she, what do you think of that? Is she cute or whatever? You know, do you think? And he'll just go, he'll, I, I don't know, I guess. Here, give me the ball. Okay, like, yeah, he's give a shit, yeah. So now it's starting to. Okay. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so I think, like, he's starting to be like, I see now a little bit. Yeah. Where she and her girlfriend, they like they have their little group they talks. Under, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. They understand. It's, it's really amazing <laughs> that she's three years younger, and it's just, they're just, I, I will say this, I'm talking about this on stage, too, like, women, to me, man, are like, it's amazing how just in tune, just in tune and 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 really strong, like, having a daughter and, and a wife, the way my wife is, do my wife takes care of, my wife is a fucking G, man. Yeah. She takes care of, she run like, we're going to Europe, we're going to Europe because I'm With performing. The kids? Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm cool. performing in London. And, oh, that's uh, the best. Yeah, and, and uh, I'm really I'm really humbled by it because I sold it out and we're doing a nice. we added another one. So what fun. venue are you and, doing? Um, I'm doing 21 Soho. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. yeah. So uh, it used to be like a 300 seater. Now it's 200. So we added we sold one out. We added one. The Giants are playing the Packers in London, so I'm going to go to that. Oh, in At, London? The, yeah. So Weird. The, the NFL does a London game every year. Oh. I didn't so know that. so this Cario. year this year is the Giants and the Packers, and then we're That's gonna a good take game. then we're gonna take a train to <laughs> Paris and stay there for a few <gasps> yeah. nights. Yeah, oh, fun. so so yeah, so we're we're so taking. She's the, helping organize. I mean, it? she's just like no, I mean, not only helping organize, she's like, I mean, hotels, flights, what time we gotta get there, car service. I mean, it's just so wow. But she's so on that that it's actually wild. Okay, mm. that's it's, a very lovely quality to have in a spouse. Like if my wife you hit the jackpot. <laughs> if my wife threw you a party, yeah, right. Let's be, just say my wife threw you like a party. Like you, you, uh, She's a Corinne, I can tell. She would that. Be fucking. It would be every detail of what you like. Yeah. It would be act like on on napkins and shit. Right. Like the she balloons listens. would. Uh, dude, it would be. You would go there and be like, you should be a party. This is right. the craziest shit. She's like that in life. Wow. And that's why sometimes we can bang heads because I'm just, she remembers every fucking well, thing you said. <laughs> well, yeah, but I'll also be like, oh, we'll, we'll figure out dinner tomorrow. She'd be like, oh, there's a there's a seafood festival tomorrow. Do you want to? <laughs> and I'll be like, well, let's just play it by. Let's see what play we do. Night and she's like, no. Well, I could buy tickets on, and she. Well, we just, gotta go to the seafood festival. Yeah, yeah. She, yeah she's just like, no, but I can you get tickets for now. Each other. Yeah, it's definitely a good balance. Yeah, I'm like a. I'll go to the airport and fly somewhere today. Right. And she, she that started crying. One time I did that, she started crying. She was just like, what? No, we you don't yeah. even have tickets. So she's just like, we gotta, you know. But yeah. listen, if that's if that's what I'm dealing with, I'm okay. Yeah, that's not bad. That's great. Yeah, that's yeah. a great quality to have. Yeah, yeah. Some guys are like, yeah, she cheated four times. Like, yeah, that's my wife that's a fucking nightmare. My trip to Paris. 
hair is too good. <laughs> yeah. Well, you gotta be a team. Yeah. You gotta be a team, oh, right? My God, my wife is just—you know—she organized my drawers, but you know, my she t-shirts are color. Uh, my t-shirts are color coordinated. What a fucking nightmare! You know? oh, I paid a lady to uh, to organize my drawers, and I felt uncomfortable doing it. She was like folding my underwear. I go, "You don't have to do that." She goes, "But I like it." I go, "Wow, this okay. is the job for you." Wow. I want a wife. That sounds fun. Yeah. yeah there are yeah, certain yeah. people, man, in this world that are truly saints when it comes to shit like that like mm. people that want to be nurses yeah oh we know yeah. we know a woman in our neighborhood there was a guy who lived up the street from us he was in his 90s he was a little delusional mm -hmm. he was like dirty his wife was gone his wife Aww. died he would walk around in a suit and everything Aww, and, and our neighbor and our, our neighbor goes Ugh. our neighbor goes i just I just want to give him a bath. I'm like, what? That's a fucking somebody who wants nurturing. to nurturing. Yeah. Like somebody that will clean yeah. an old person's shitty diaper and wipe them down and put them to bed and give them dinner and gets fulfilled. That's another fucking yeah. person. Yeah, yeah. That's like an yeah. amazing. Yeah. We need those people. In those people world. are like, yeah, like those people that will Caregivers. like, they want to be in the hospital even when it just gets literally raided with victims. Yeah. They want to like, well, let's get this. Let's get, you're just going like, that's a, like that's literally raided with victims. <laughs> <laughs> the victims are raiding the ER. <laughs> just like, all right, let's go help them. I just like, they need a bath. Like, just bloody people. You're just just like zombies. Yeah. Walking. yeah, I know, I know. I, I know. Raided, shot. raided with victims. As I said it, I'm like, that sounds a little aggressive. I don't know how many nurses would be down that's for that. I go, when's the last premise? time you went to a hospital? Because I don't know that that's accurate. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, but you got, a marriage is a team. And like, but the, to it me, is. even in, when you're a couple, you're a team. It, like, and, but usually when, before you're like married and have kids and stuff, you're, you're, you're team goals are like have fun <laughs> you have to and, and here's one thing like you know date night has to happen yeah because date when, your spouse. When, when me and when me and stace were fighting not fighting but when we were just so busy and it was just like tension because like she's got to do this i got to do this well when she gets home i got to get in the car and go do spots but somebody needs to pick up the kids when it was like that all of a sudden you forget each other in yeah. a way that you remember that you want to go back and remember yeah so we would like we would start going to like dinners and yeah. get wine and talk and make things good. Yeah, you know, you gotta... Because, I mean, that you're, the bond that you must have with your wife after enduring well, not only 15 years of marriage, but, like, two children and, like, the trials and tribulations of raising a kid, let alone two, I mean, that bonds you in a way that's like, whew, that shit runs deep. And I learned that I'm no picnic, you know? Like, I'm easy. <laughs> you're not? I'm easy. You don't, yeah. No, 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 but she, everybody says, she'll even say, we've got, she's even gotten into a fight because I'm so late. I'm so easy going. Uh, okay. Which bothers her because I'm right. very late because I've been through a lot of shit and it takes a lot. I've okay. seen a lot of shit. I'm, I'm like an easy, happy, go, go lucky, you know, but sometimes that can be a lot because yeah. I'm just, I'm just kind of like. She's probably like, care more, Paul. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah it gets and, annoying sometimes. And, and I'm very, very like prideful. So like I've, mm. I'm very much like if I want to win, I want to win and I'll do anything and I kind of can be a little bit a little short stubborn stubborn yeah you know and i'm like no you know so certain things like that but yeah no you gotta you gotta go on date night you know you gotta have sex you gotta have yeah, you gotta, yeah. all of those things because if one of those lacks yeah then, and so listen the, the sex thing definitely you get married the sex thing is gonna lack a little bit it's yeah just, but is it the marriage and, or is it the kids, kids? yeah well, that's the thing like yeah. i did i did a so joke busy. In, in the Too tired to fuck. in the netflix special i did a joke where yeah. it's like when you have kids and you want to have sex like I, I like you turn into a creep where it was like <laughs> that was like they're in the they're in the driveway we got like seven you know and it turns into this rushing mm, fucking right. thing but it's just because you can't have your 13 year old yeah and your 10 -year seeing like you a, dick down oh, your wife yeah, yeah yeah so that that's a part of it right like right, kids right. being around is a part of it so how does does the actual sex evolve not, not just the the rushness or the use fitting it in but like does the way because like when i was with somebody for seven years and like our sex had like a nice little arc like we got to know each other's bodies more and, <laughs> yeah. and then you throw in stuff and it gets bored there's times where it was boring and we didn't have any, have any kids so like i can't imagine having kids on top of that that's more of a strain but like does the way like you touch each other evolve yeah, I think what I think you make like you got to just make it like make it better if it's yeah yeah you got to just but but I will say having kids you're kind of just trying down for the act like you like like <laughs> yeah. like like I'm not gonna lie you know it's not but I would I would say yeah like I mean I, we'll put it this way when the kids are gone yeah 
that would probably change. Yeah, yeah. Like when the kids are gone, you don't have to worry about somebody knocking on the door. You don't have to worry about. They're old enough that you could be like, if the door's closed, don't knock though. Yeah, yeah but what? They're yeah. probably gonna be like, what are you doing? Can I have? Can I hang out? What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, or like you know, they'll just like, hey, can I come in here and watch TV? Yeah. And I'm kind of like, I remember no. one. T- I remember one time I was like, I was real like excited. I was into. It. I was like, let's. I was like ready to go, and I was like running around the room and shit. And the kids and and my and she's just like, no, we we can't. I'm like, no, no, it's good. And she's like, no, trust me we can't and then like literally 30 seconds later the door knocked in with one of the kids and she, she was like see i'm like all right you know oh, uh, fuck yeah, but, yeah. yeah. When, do, when you during the birth of both of your children were you by your wife's head yeah yeah but, yeah yeah so she <laughs> did you discuss that what well, well no no it was i had to be okay i, I had to you be. couldn't be on the other side like I, see, I, the receiving, hospital had receiving too many marriages ruined so yeah we're like we're no my wife here. had a c-section oh okay oh yeah so, so that's, they so i mean yeah oh, so your germs got to be out c-section of that area. can never kill a boner well, well, because not, not only that because it's it's, it's, there's like like there's literally like a, blood a t- yeah, yeah yeah like so you're just kind of like and Does then blood freak and, you and, out and they're like no okay but no blood <laughs> blood freaks my older brother out where he faints oh yeah 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 so like he's one of those where he's got to like just sit down and we laugh but yeah he can't he can't if he sees a needle in a movie he'll start he'll start getting pale I get shit. that oh. yeah I'm mm. not blood doesn't really bother me yeah yeah okay so c-section both times but it was cool because the c-section they'll be like they'll be like alright get your ca-, like the doctor will literally get your camera because I'm, I'm taking them out oh wow and all of a sudden dude then you're you're a dad now is that a photo or a video you look at a lot no, what it was was so after that, you know, she's obviously going through what she's going through, and then they take the baby and they clean the baby and they put him on a thing, and it was just me and my son, ah. and he grabbed my pinky and squeezed it. And oh I, my it, god! It fucked he me up. Grabbed it. It Aww. fucked it. Like I'm talking I'll about. Fuck me. I like, fucked when, up hearing when, it. Like, he was like not even two minutes old, wow. and he just grabbed my pinky, he reached for and, you. Then, and then and then I, he squeezed it, and I was just like, Oh, oh my god! Yeah, it was wild. That's a that's a rare moment. Is that rare for and, a baby and, to do that and uh it was it was i don't know if it was it was it was not well the weird thing is that as soon as the baby gets handed to the mother it will go for the nipple mm-hmm. oh like wow. like an instant like a no like it, like like without like just knows to eat like it's wow it's wild like it just goes to eat wow so i don't know when wild. i put my hand by his hand which was like literally like so yeah and he just like grabbed this i was just like oh this is real because here, this is the thing and and any of your listeners will probably know this my wife wasn't upset with me but she was more more like how come you're not connected as much with the pregnancy right oh. she would be pregnant mm. and she'd be like oh my god he's kicking and i would feel and i'd be like oh that's yeah. cool right but like but when i saw him yeah men are so visual the, creatures. The, 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 conne- the connection with the woman is the whole way yeah the, the whole time but with the dude or in my case i don't yeah. want to speak for everybody i've but never it, asked a guy it, about it, that it, like uh, how how do you feel during the pregnancy portion I, w- of it? I was you know i didn't know what to expect you know it was scary man i was a feature i was featuring on the road i was you know not making the money that i wanted to make i find out that i'm having a little boy my career was moving and i knew that i was doing really good as a feature and i was gonna move to headliner but like i wasn't making the money to you know my wife had a had a, a job and i would anything i could do with stand up would contribute we were okay paying bills and stuff but i was scared yeah and i was nervous and i didn't know and and so maybe subconsciously that's why i wasn't connected because yeah, i was just yeah, so kind of like fucking i got to do this i got to do this and then when i saw him dude and when he, and that was just like the yeah, finger that was, that's uh, wild that, that fucked me up man and that's then, so cool and then with my daughter we were like we kind of it's so funny cuz i remember when lucas went to his first shot he's screaming crying Aww. he's screaming crying and I visioned I envisioned me taking it and sticking it in the nurses I, I was I was I was like if this bitch hurts oh you got son, a papa bear I'll fuck it I just pictured like a hostage situation yeah, where I yeah. just held it next to her neck and I was like I'll put like which is the crazy she's helping yeah. but I was so and then with my daughter I was like yeah here yeah. <laughs> but, but, but that's why but I think that's also why Sophia is a little bit like kind of because with the first one you're kind of like you little micromanage a little bit yeah I imagine yeah but we did she actually my wife did really good we we did good not being panicky Mm -hmm. because i've heard we've heard stories about how like a mother's first child they could be like overly and and the kid feels it my brother helicopter parent yeah my brother feels it so we didn't do that we didn't do that my brother was parented like that because he was the firstborn and then when he had his son he's the most relaxed laid-back parent in the best way like he gives his kids space to learn and grow and like 
you know, you can't learn from something unless you do the fall and scrape your knee. So it's like he's not trying to prevent his son from having experiences. Right. I'm like, that's so valuable. No, it's, it's huge. It's huge. Bobby, I think I saw like a podcast clip. This is years ago. Bobby Kelly, like, yeah, my son wanted to go up on the roof. And I was like, all right, Max, let's go up on the roof and fix it. And I was like, damn. Yeah. He was talking about how he just lets his kid, if he's curious, follow the curiosity. And if you get hurt, yeah. all right, we'll figure it out. But you got to, one thing you got to do as a parent is you got to trust yourself because you're going to yeah. get it. You're going to get it. Like, that's the thing. Everyone's going to tell you shit. Yeah. And, you know, uh, uh, that's all that's their experience yeah. yeah yeah you know it's like you're you will as a as a mother or father i think you know i remember that you said bobby kelly i remember i was doing a podcast with bobby and the podcast was over and it was like four of us and everyone starts leaving he goes verzi can you stay here for a second i want to talk to you and this is when bobby and i just started to become friends and he was asking me about my son. He was asking me about my kids and what's it like because he was about to have a son. Aww. And he wanted to ask me. Aww. And you know, he's and, and he's That's, an incredible father. Yeah, he's he an is. incredible you could father. Tell. Yeah, he's yeah. an incredible father. He and loves it's just, his kids. It's just an instinct. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think some people some people don't feel worthy of it. Oh, that's interesting. Some people don't feel worthy of it. Mm. That's like, I mean, that's like a, such an overriding theme in life that people that, don't feel that, worthy that, you of. You know what things. I heard? It's, it's applicable to relationships, too. That's actually 100% right. Yeah. I, I just saw one of the best quotes ever was somebody said, um, a lot of people don't achieve their goals because they don't feel worthy of them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So like people like, and that's a heavy fucking yeah. thing, but that, mm. is, that goes with life. Yeah. You know, a lot of people. Self-sabotage. Yeah, Self-sabotage. Yeah. A lot of people don't have that, that worth and stuff. And in our business, it's a lot. Yeah. You know, it's a lot. So for me, having the family and doing all that stuff was was really good for me yeah it's grounding that, i imagine right? yeah and, and it's and just, humbling it's yeah it's, and material for days material and <laughs> yeah real life stuff you because as you as i grew as a husband and a father and a human being yeah my act just yeah i, I love when comics have kids because i'm like oh i can't wait to hear their perspective on what it's like to raise a person yeah yeah and, and when you don't do it in a way who was i just talking to this about i was just talking to this about somebody's having a kid and then they were like yeah i'm gonna start getting oh i was talking to jim florence about it's mm -hmm. like well he's, he's got a son but when you do kid material of course it's going to be shitty and hacky if you're like oh so changing a shitty diaper nobody but if you make the real experiences that you have like yeah i closed the netflix special with this with this um joke story of my son and i playing one-on-one -on -one basketball in the driveway and he was the first time he challenged me what we're like talking shit and chested up to me and challenged me uh, and people so many people connected with it because it was just a real thing yeah as opposed to doing like generic stuff but when yeah. you make that story about what you're feeling yeah it's, it, the crowd is just like oh man because even if it's a young person they're thinking of their dad or mom yeah and if it's a parent they're thinking of what their they kid. did so everybody can can really that's the type of family material that i want to do where people are like oh shit yeah that's really real yeah you yeah know? even the ugly shit yeah if you may, that's you one know? thing everybody has in common we all have a family of some sort even if we didn't have a family that's we have a relationship to a family or to like the the notion of family yeah absolutely that's great so your netflix special is out now Netflix special is out now and uh, it's doing great. Thank God. It's called uh, Nocturnal Admissions, and uh, yeah, it was, it was trending, trending globally. Yay, congrats! It was, so cool. it was it was a lot of work, and and I'm so glad that uh, that it's there. And Netflix was great. They let me edit. They were like, oh, oh nice, they good. Were, they were fantastic. They really were. I gotta say, like working with them couldn't have been easier. Wow. So uh, yeah, and it's doing great. So oh, I'm so glad to hear that, Paul. Congratulations. Thank you so much. You're 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 one of the best in the game. We're oh, happy to have you on. It. Go no. watch his special, man. And I really respect what you guys did you know because you guys got into this podcast game and you know you fucked it up and Thanks. uh yeah. and that's it's really dope sound so, you. and uh no it's it's true it's like you got to give credit where credit's due thanks i appreciate you know, it we've like, been saying that into the lens a lot yeah and it hasn't really been yeah well, it's on. less effective when we say it and <laughs> it's more less effective when somebody when else say it about ourselves <laughs> so we appreciate it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. yeah oh can i plug dates or not yes yes, yes, oh, yes. yes. Go when, ahead. when does this come out yeah uh, in a couple weeks yeah we're not sure yeah two three weeks uh two three weeks so it's not gonna work for uh we can give your website so anyway so yeah you go to my website, paulverzi.com. You can check out my podcast, The Verzi Effect. I also co-host Anything Better with Bill Burr. Oh, nice. And um, I will be in London. The first show is sold out October so 7th. Awesome. We have a lot of fuckers in London. October October 8th, I'll be at 21 Soho. They added a Saturday at 10 o'clock. Um, uh, I'm sorry. October 19th, I'll be at the DC Improv. Mm. And October 20th, I will be at the Philadelphia Punchline. All dates Ooh. are on paulverzi.com. Thank you Yay. so much. Yay. Go Thank see you. Paul live, you guys. Yes, that'll be fun. Yeah, we just, we just try to encourage our guests to see more stand-up comedy. Yeah. And they're actually very and good about doing it. Not our guests, our, our listeners. Our, our listeners. Oh, nice. Yeah. They're a fantastic comedy audience. We've trained them because we first went on tour. There was a lot of talking back and forth. We we're like, you guys, we got we like sat them down Isn't on that the, the worst? Show. Isn't that the worst? But they're our, very supportive. Our like audience. We have, we have an especially supportive listener. We do. And they're fucking fantastic. 
fantastic stand-up crowd now. Yeah. I'm so proud of you guys. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We really trained them to how to be a comedy audience member. That's you awesome. yeah, yeah, Podcast is so different. So yeah, <laughs> they're great. We love you. Thank yeah. you. This has been Guys We Fuck the anti slut shaming Podcast. We'll talk to you next Friday. Oh, fearful or disorganized, that's exactly me.